everyone, my name is Christina and in this video I'm going to be going through the three main things to think about when choosing a medical school. So, the first one is location. You might already have an idea, which is great, about whereabouts you want to live um, for university or where you want to go. You might want to be far from home or you might want to be quite close to home. You might want to be in a big city or, you know, maybe small town, something like that. Um, it's good to have a rough idea because then it just gives you um, a bit more to work with. This is quite important because it does limit how many medical schools you can apply to. So, for example, if I said I'm from the northeast, if I said I only want to go to university in the northeast, that would limit me massively. There are only two medical schools in the northeast, Newcastle and Sunderland. So, yeah, you need you need to have an idea, and I would recommend not limiting yourself too much. So I understand I, I wanted to be close to home, but I knew that I might have to travel, you know, a bit further away. Once you've decided where you want to live, make a list of all these medical schools in this area. If it's anywhere in the UK, then that's great. That means you have more options. But if, especially if it's um, a smaller area, definitely make a list. I'll leave a link in the description box below of a list of all the medical schools in the UK and their location to help you out. So using that link, you can just use that list and cross off anywhere that um, is too far away or outside of your desired location. The next thing is style of course. So I'm sure you guys know, but there are three main styles of course um, for medicine. So, so I'll just quickly run over those. Traditional, problem-based learning and integrated. So the first thing you need to know is that teaching at medical school is split into preclinical and clinical years. In preclinical years, your teaching is mainly in lectures or small groups, and you're pretty much laying the foundations for your clinical years. So you're learning all the basics of medicine, you're learning about all the different organ systems, all the different diseases and stuff like that. And then in your clinical years, this is where you're mostly in hospitals and GPs. This is where you're learning about um, you know, what life is gonna be actually like as a doctor. You'll be shadowing a lot of doctors um, during your clinical years and yeah you're a lot more practical based and you'll be just full-time you know in hospitals and stuff like that you might have lectures every now and then but you are mostly going to be in a clinical setting so with PBL your teaching is mainly via small groups you will have lectures anatomy and clinical skills to support your learning but your learning is going to be mainly via small groups and the way that it works is you brainstorm different solutions to a patient scenario so there might be a scenario where a 60 year old man has a cough and he also has you know some chest pain and as a group you'll kind of brainstorm different ideas and maybe solutions to that scenario and then during the week you'll have lectures maybe anatomy and you'll also have independent study and then at the end of the week you'll kind of regroup and you'll talk about what you've learned and you'll share ideas then there's integrated which is the method that most medical schools use this is where you're taught mainly via lectures most of the information that you'll be getting is just a lecturer kind of telling you all the different information that you need so it is a lot less independent than PBL, but you do have some small group teaching to support your learning as well, as well as anatomy and clinical skills and stuff like that. And then there's traditional, which is pretty much just Oxford and Cambridge. There might be a couple of others. I'll put them on the screen. So in traditional courses, your preclinical years will be mainly lectures. You will have anatomy and clinical skills again to support your learning, but yeah, mainly lectures. With PBL and integrated courses, you will have, you know, some clinical exposure in your preclinical years. So you might have hospital placements every now and then every few weeks, or you might, you know, visit a GP every few weeks as well. But with traditional courses, you do not have clinical exposure until your clinical years. So the first time that you'll see patients is going to be in year four. So that is something to think about if you, you know, if you're really eager to see patients and be a medical student on the wards. If you study a traditional course, you won't do that until year four. So the next thing is entry requirements. Now I've left the most important thing till last because this is where most people go wrong. Medicine has such a high competition ratio, so the way to increase your chances of getting in is to apply to your strengths. If you've got a really good set of GCSEs and maybe a low UCAT, do your research and find out which universities focus more on your GCSEs rather than your UCAT. The same goes for if you have a really high BMAT score, but you don't have very good GCSEs. Have a look and find if there's any universities that focus more on the BMAT and less so on the GCSEs. You won't be able to find universities that do not look at all at you know your weak points, but they de there definitely will be options out there where they focus less on those. It it's so important because this is the main reason why people don't get in first time. So definitely try and avoid this mistake and apply to your strengths. Now, once you've done these three steps, you might be in a position where you don't have many options left. The best way to kind of broaden your horizons is 
I would say just if you've narrowed down your location a bit too much, so it's just worth having a think about, you know, maybe if it's worth ex expanding your location a little bit just to make sure that you can apply to your strengths just because that is the most important thing and that is where most people do fall down. So if you're wondering how you can kind of piece all these things together, I've got a link in the description for a comparison tool that compares all the medical schools in the UK and you can select four different medical schools and it compares their entry requirements all at once. So it's really easy to compare and see which ones are best suited to you. I've also got a whole entire blog post on how to choose a medical school. So if you want a bit more details, definitely check out my blog post on this. Hey guys, so to help you put together everything that I've shown you in this video, I've actually made this little document called My Medical Schools. And as you can see from this example, it's basically so um, you can use it to just kind of put together everything you've learned from this video. So for example, you can decide which medical schools would be green if you color code them. And you can see, you know, which ones have a good location, the style of course that you want and the entry requirements. And I've given you like a full list of all the medical schools so you can like fill in everything as well as like some resources at the bottom to help you as well. So yeah, this will be linked in the description box below for you guys. Let me know in the comments what type of videos you'd like to see from me. I have a whole entire playlist dedicated to getting into medical school. So if you want more medicine related videos, definitely check that out here. And yes, thank you so much for watching guys. Bye. Mm -hmm.